Hi, I haven't made a video for a while, so I thought it was time to get back to work on the series, What I Do. Started it last year and did an introductory episode and never got back to it. Got a lot of other things going. They were all important things, so, but I wanna come back and start trying to produce these videos regularly and talk about my process, talk about what I'm doing and what, um, what it's like to do these things uh, with macular degeneration, which I suffer from. Um, macular degeneration causes um, loss of central vision. Um, you see it in older adults, but I had it since I was little, and it's caused me um, to have difficulty seeing people and objects, um, reading print, uh, particularly small print, but everything is blurry or there are blobs from blind spots in my central vision. Um, I actually um, utilized a, uh, I put an object here in front of the camera that helps me to track where the lens should be when I'm looking straight ahead. So it appears at least that I'm looking normally at the camera and making eye contact with you. Uh, that being said, I'm here to talk about my uh, new video that I just finished for the album Years Not Days. Um, and there's an interesting story behind that title I'll go into real briefly. Um, Years Not Days came to me listening to a podcast, uh, as a movie podcast, and they were talking about the film Scott Pilgrim. And I don't know if you know of that movie, but it was not successful. Um, it's a cult classic though. And the director um, was going to go out and do press for the movie anyway. He knew that it wasn't going to do well. And the head of marketing for the movie studio that made the movie he actually said, he said, uh, the director said, send him the best email uh, advice he ever got for anything or for a movie. And it was just the words, years, not days. This marketing person knew this movie had potential to be popular as time went on. And, and I can kind of relate to that for my, my own work. So I like that phrase. I like that title. So I went with it. The video is um, for the song, Don't Defeat Yourself. Um, I didn't know at the time I wrote it that there was so much imagery in it that alluded to tornadoes. Um, but I do like tornadoes a lot. So I um, have it since I was a kid. And um, probably because of the super outbreak of 1974 when I was about 10 years old. Um, the, I lived very close to where one of the most infamous tornadoes of that outbreak occurred was the, the Xenia, Ohio tornado, which was a very devastating F5 that went through the center of, of the city and killed 32 people. Um, but I saw a lot of uh, articles and newspaper reporting and, and video and of that event and it got me very interested in uh, the destructiveness of these forces of nature. So I became a lifelong fan of tornadoes and tornado videos and tornado series like uh, Tornado Chasers where the, the, uh, these people get into the, as close to these storms as they can safely to bring you into it and to collect data for scientific research. But, um, but anyway, the song picked up some of those phrases from uh, just my knowledge of that. Um, there was a, a line, the, the sky is broken. There's a line um, more clearly says, the tornado is rain wrapped, you won't see it coming. And there was one final line. Um, well, there's a, this place is, takes pieces of me away. And then there was another part where I say, um, suck them into the portal. So there's a lot of imagery that, f that runs into tornado uh, uh, stuff. And uh, so I decided to, maybe the video could have some kind of a theme like that. So I decided to do a, a tornado video where I was a weatherman tracking a, a large storm on the loose in Indianapolis where I live. And there were many ways I could have done the tornado that was going to be the, the 
the money shots, the star of the, of the video was going to be that because they're very uh, fascinating to look at. And I'm not that fascinating to look at, but I have to be the weatherman. And I was surprised when I looked at myself on camera that I sort of resembled um, Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel. But uh, at any rate, uh, I was trying to figure out how to do this tornado. And it's like, I thought, well, I could do it in 3D because I can do 3D. But it's kind of um, it's kind of a problem with my setup because I have a very old machine and it's very hard to process large chunks of data and very large files. And a 3D image, a 3D animation can take a lot of processing power that might take me might be possible for me to do it would take days perhaps to get done and might crash or I may render it and then see that there's something about it I didn't catch when I was checking it over and I have to do it again. So I was trying to think of better ways to represent the tornado that we could look as realistic without having to, to go to that step. So I thought of, um, I use a program called Adobe After Effects, which is kind of the Swiss army knife for video editing and I use it for everything I do. So I decided to use that and there are features within Adobe After Effects that can create different kinds of uh, simulations or particles or uh, filters of, of all kinds, things that can create realistic looking smoke or fire, which I've done. But there's also one um, for creating tornadoes. And I did some research and did some tutorials and found um, there's a setting for a particle simulator called Vortex. And Vortex is a very uh, close to approximating a tornado's swirling, uh, spiraling upward movement. Um, I just had to create a particle type that would kind of make that look right. And then there are many settings and sliders within that particle system that using Vortex can shape that into a what resembles a, a reasonably realistic tornado. So, and I did some research trying to figure out um, how I want that tornado to look because I've got a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do with it. Um, there are some tornadoes that I was very um, keen on trying to capture the the essence of. Um, one was um, a tornado from 1991 in Andover, Kansas, that uh, was uh, happened to be um, recorded by a gentleman who was situated just in a couple of miles away from it and was able to safely get his camcorder out and shoot about 15 minutes of this large destructive tornado moving past him through subdivisions of the, of the city. Um, there, the other one I thought about was the Tuscaloosa tornado from 2011 that went through the center of that city, which um, was very uh, recorded by quite a few people. And so there's a lot of good footage of that tornado to, to use as reference. So I use the, again, I use the Andover tornado and I use the Tuscaloosa tornado um, and bits and pieces of other tornadoes to create the, the effect, the um, the simulation of, of what I thought the tornado should look like. I wanted the tornado to have that massive scale and magnitude and fear, fearfulness. Um, I wanted to be scary. I wanted it to be violent like these tornadoes are. So um, I think I did okay with that idea. I think it went all right. Um, but um, I also had to create a particle cloud at the bottom of the tornado funnel to like where the dust is coming up and, and around the tornado as it's, as it's moving. Um, also, I had to create a debris, uh, some debris particles that would be thrown up in the air. If you look at tornado videos, and in particular, if they zoom in close to an edge of a tornado, you'll sometimes see pieces of roof, debris from buildings, just or even a car being brought up into the air and f seeming to just kind of be in a gravitational field around the tornado because of the strength of it. Um, and I wanted those things to be visible too in the tornado in, in certain shots. So I did those, um, and I brought all that together. And then I also had to go out um, and I shot some test 
locations, some, some uh, locations around my area um, to get for the, for the video. And I did, uh, uh, there's Butler University nearby. There's, uh, there were a couple of shots uh, that I took from images that I found of Indianapolis that I thought were suitable. There were a couple I took, just grabbed video out of a car window and I used that for tracking a tornado in, in the opening shots. Um, and then there were a couple of shots I just did. I think there was one at Purdue I took a shot of that I used for the final shot. Um, but the one I think is most humorous is I also have a shot of it going past my house and missing it by a few hundred yards. So that was kind of a funny little uh, joke for me. Um, I also wanted details of the tornado to be uh, visible that I don't always see in other depictions of tornadoes, at least to my knowledge. One of the things I have always seemed to notice about tornado videos that are when they're being covered by news cameras and helicopters flying around, which in the in the tornado alley area is pretty a pretty much of a, a given. You're going to have a, like a crew of people following tornadoes around because they're so prevalent. But um, you see power flashes, which are the the tornado will be moving across power lines and electrical transformers and it'll be knocking them out with the, the violence of the wind and you will see these discharges of power from from those things uh, being hit so i wanted those to uh, make an appearance in my video and i kind of use them as rhythmic devices as well um, they popping in at certain times in the beat but uh, also i had to create wind effects i had to composite uh, video of some of these scenes where you see branches moving because particularly in the scene where it goes by my house, there was a, there were a lot of trees and the tornado winds don't just exist inside the tornado. They're around the tornado. So you're going to have wind blowing violently around it as well. And I wanted to make sure that you felt that part of it. So I know it was very important for me to make sure this looked as good as I could make it. Um, so that was my tornado, uh, challenge and I think I met it and I think I by and large did a pretty good job. The other part of it was doing the weatherman part. I had to shoot myself in front of a green screen. I have a large one that I use that I shot, um, myself performing the song. I'm talking through the song. Um, and if you look, there's a, there's a graphic at the bottom of the screen with, uh, they call it a lower third in the, in the jargon, but there's a, there was a ticker at the bottom and you see words moving across in the ticker and that they're the lyrics to the song. And as I'm saying the words to the song, as I'm pretending to like, uh, tell you about the, the conditions that are existing with this tornado, trying to, to, to uh, chronicle the event, so to speak. Um, I'm singing the song, I'm making these gestures, and then the, as I'm saying them, the words are coming out of the ticker at the same time. Um, I thought that was kind of a fun little thing to try, because a lot of times people don't know the lyrics to your songs or they can't hear them, so it's like, there they are, they're in the song, you can see them, you can read along. But, um, but no, and then I had to create these um, weather maps, and so I found satellite images of the Midwest and of Indiana. And I use those for my backdrop. And I also used, um, I used Photoshop to create the, the storm itself, the, uh, the reds and greens of the, of the storm regions that are passing over uh, where I am and trying to create what um, looks realistic as far as a tornado has a certain signature in the weather system. And, so again, these are details that matter to me. They don't, people aren't really going to care <laughs> as much about those things as I do. But to me, they were important to add those little devices, those little details in to give it some, some semblance of realism, even though it's obviously not realistic in every, in every instance. Um, 
There was also another tornado um, effect that I, I, I circle back to that I, I thought was really cool. Um, there was a the scene where I'm playing the guitar during the instrumental break. There's a house behind me that you see the darkening sky, and then the tornado winds hit it and destroy it. And that is actually a real, uh, based on a real uh, video that I saw of a closed capture or a closed circuit TV security video that was in a tornado in Parkersburg, Iowa, another F5. And the, there was a bank that got destroyed, but in the process, the bank's video camera showed this house being destroyed at the same time. And so you see this closed circuit video and it's just really creepy because you see how it gets darker and darker and darker and just almost pitch black. And then the winds just hit it and blow this house apart. And I just thought that was a very disturbing and cool at the same time um, effect. And I thought it would be an interesting thing to add as well. So that, that came from, a lot of these things came from real um, observations that I've, I've come across. The video took about, um, I'd say about a month to make, which is not bad. I've gotten much quicker doing videos, although because I've done four records in the last year, which I'm very proud of. I think they're great. Um, but doing videos when you're doing everything by yourself, you tend to get behind when your output, your musical output is so um, prolific at the moment that the videos can't keep up with them. And I just had finished a video for the second of those four records um, that was an animated video and that took about three months to make. So um, I had hoped to make videos as these records came out, but I had to skip over my third one, Schadenfreude, and make, because um, I wanted to make this video first. I just, I was drawn to doing this first, so I thought I'd go ahead and get it, get it out there. And I said, I think it's my favorite video I've done. It's definitely one of the most ambitious ones I've done. Um, so I'm very pleased to present it to you. And I hope you enjoy watching the video. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you like the song. I hope I intend to make more videos as quickly as I can. Um, but I did want to make this video and talk about what I'm doing, how I'm doing. Um, but I have been pretty, pretty active, just not on this series. And I'm hoping that I'll keep up with this a little better going forward because I think my video production is picking up a little bit of uh, efficiency. So hopefully um, I will be presenting you another one shortly. It was nice to have this discussion with you and take care of yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye.